Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first in an occasional series of interviews with some of our stalwarts. Tonight's guest is Mr. John Shepherd. Hi, John. Hello, on a nice sunny evening up in Tlanevith. Yes, I'm keeping you from the sunset. I feel so guilty. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, you volunteered to be first for this, which surprised me, but there you go. Um, Let's start at the beginning. A long time ago, back in the dawn of time, you were a kid and you came from Burnley. Yes, it is a long, long time. In fact, in uh, what it's about another seven weeks, I will have another sort of zero birthday, which is a bit scary, but um, there we are. Yeah. Uh, Grew up in Burnley. I'm a proud northerner. My brother did a family tree thing and apart from my parents, all the ancestors from way, way, way back, everybody was a cotton worker. Burnley is black pudding belt, cotton town. Um, and as a kid, the town was still dominated by the mills and the chimneys and and that's just what I got used to, was just all the soot and the filth everywhere. And the town was always really hardcore labour and I couldn't believe it this year, which probably speaks volumes about Corbyn when they refused to vote for him and Burnley has now got a Tory MP. But uh, there we go. Anyway, I grew up on a big council estate called Rose Hill, which sounds a lot nicer than it was, and went to Rose Hill Junior School and had some stunningly good teachers there, with one notable exception. Uh, class 5 at Rose Hill Junior School was Miss Chester. She was a middle-aged woman who always came to school in a girl guide's uniform and she had sort of a severe haircut and comfortable shoes, so think what you will of that. Anyway, one day the whole school was in the hall singing and Miss Chester went round and she picked out myself, I think it was a lad called Nigel Pollard and David Stockdale and we were made to stand at the side and we weren't allowed to sing with the rest of the school because we were what she called grunters and we were spoiling it for the whole of the school and I was probably age nine going on ten at this time and that bitch left me scarred for life and as a teenager I used to go down to Turf Moor to watch Burnley every Saturday afternoon I got a season ticket, I had a paper round which paid for me a season ticket and I was unable even to join in with the massed yobs behind the goal at the cricket field end, joining in all the obscenities. I was seriously scarred there, so uh, thanks a lot for that Miss Chester. Yeah. Anyway, here's a song about, um, about cotton towns. It's about the Rosendale Valley, which was just over the hill at the back of where we lived. It's a Mike Harding song, and it says it all really. Uh, it's called King Cotton. See how the wind flies out over the moorland. See how the smoke to the valley clings See how the slate roof shine in the drizzle This is the valley where cotton is king See how the houses cling to the hillside Hear the streets of children sing The scream of a thousand factories. This is the 
valley where God is king. See how hunger has eaten the faces, tired flesh to the bones just clings. There's dust in the lungs and their bodies are twisted. This is the valley where God is king. Sleep is washed from the broken faces, morning clogs on the cobbles ring. Same thing where many must work so the few might prosper. This is the valley where God is king. Flying over the moorland, say the graves to the valley sides cling. Look at the mills, they're idle and empty. This was the valley where cotton was king. This was the valley where cotton was king. that you had a Labour MP who was three times elected leader of the Labour Party and won a Nobel Peace Prize for failing. <laughs> <laughs> was it Arthur Henderson or something like that? Didn't know. He must have been, um, he must have been <laughs> sort of MP when I was away. I think. Where, where did we have no, it was in the 1930s. Oh, 30s. Oh, uh, even I'm not that old. He got the Nobel Peace Prize in, I think, 36. But you know, at its height, there were 99,000 looms in Burnley. I can well believe it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, our M the, the MP I remember was a, a bloke called Dan Jones. And he was MP forever. And I think he used to just go and sit in the bar all day, every day, and just get pissed. And he did absolutely nothing for the town. But... Uh, there we are, times change. Yeah, these things happen. So John, um, your folk influences, it, anyone who's listened to you for more than once <laughs> knows that Ralph McTell plays a very big part in what you do. Yeah. Others as well, but Ralph McTell seems to be conspicuous. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> well, I was, as soon as I turned 18, um, I went off to Leeds to do dentistry and it was one of the most traumatic few weeks of my life, I would think. Cause going from this little town, I ended up in this huge city, no family, no friends. You've got to find your own food and do all the everyday stuff. And the first week of the course, I ended up in a dissecting room with a scalpel having to dissect this dead bloke who'd been soaked in formalin for months and uh, it was a big it's a big university so there was a big union and we could afford big names there 
So I was still really interested in pop and rock at this time, and there were some great bands turned up, The Who turned up. I think one of the best I, I saw a couple of times was a group called Free. They really did the best gigs ever. But uh, anyway, one night I went off with a couple of mates to see Cynthia, Miss Cynthia Grannon. She was a girl in our course, uh, tits like melons, and she used to sing and play in a jug band. A jug band is sort of one up from a skiffle group, really. Uh, it probably is more or less skiffle. There's a lot of homemade instruments, and there used to be a bloke who blew into a jug and uh, it's mainly the bass line but a good player could play all sorts and they played a lot of stuff by a bloke called Ralph McTell. Uh, Ralph did start off with a, a jug band so I went out and I bought the Spiral Staircase LP which I think was released in 1969 and there were three tracks from there that I still do regularly. It was such a good LP. Anyway, next song I've picked is uh, a Ralph McTell song. I only do this at the club when Alan's away because Alan's been doing it for years. But uh, it's a song I really like. Uh, the Girl from the Hiring Fair. I went down to the hiring fair for to sell my label. And I noticed the maid in the very next row, hoped she'd be my neighbor. Had you then, oh my delight, when the farmer picked us both. And I spoke not a word in the cart of the farm. Heart beat in my throat My lodgings are dry, my master fair I give him full measure But my envy grew like the corn in the field Who in his house was my treasure And I'd watch a carry water Or drive cows from the byre and the heat from the sun made the corn grow strong And with it my desire I'd see her in my dreaming and in my dreams caress Her eyes, her lips, her dark brown hair The curves beneath her dress When harvest time it came at last so heavy was the task That the women and the men worked side by side And I had her near her at last I swung harder with my side Few words between us passed And I cursed my tongue-tied youthfulness And hoped you'd hear my heart safely gathered in we sat down to rest my trembling fingers touched her palm and she placed them on her breast she turned to me as the sun went down and all my senses reeled we lay there Centered ground and the moon rose over the field. Safely gathered in my arms when from the farm Drifted the sounds of the violin We hurried back to the farm No 
were dancing in the lantern light Music filled the air And I thank my stars for the harvest moon And the girl from the highway fair and Oh, we're dancing in the lantern light Music filled the air And I thank my stars for the harvest moon Why did you have to dissect bodies for dentistry? Anatomy. Uh, first, first year was really tough. It was uh, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, dental anatomy, uh, stuff like that. It was. Couldn't just... they have just given you a severed head and let somebody else have the other half of the body? Well, they, we just did. Uh, we just we only did the head and neck and. It was interesting because the, the medics did the rest of the body. So we used to come in there once a week to do our bit and you, you could have a look at what the medics had been doing and uh, see their work as well. Yeah. And we were meant to buy a skull, but skulls were horrendously expensive. So I, I got through my course without ever having a skull. Uh, even, I wouldn't say second hand, but by definition, all well, skulls are second hand at least, aren't they? So, <laughs> yeah, skulls were too expensive for me, so I just got by with uh, pictures in books. Yes, but if you had a skull, it would have made a great mascot. <laughs> <laughs> could have done all the Hamlet stuff. I could have lent it Mel, couldn't I? For you his could. Hamlet in three minutes. Yeah. Um, what happened when you left Leeds? Because presumably you did graduate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I've, I've, I've still got the bit of paper somewhere. Um, yeah, after I qualified, uh, I worked at a couple of practices in Lancashire, and then I started going to some of the local clubs and pubs to hear music, and by this time, there's loads of stuff about, there's Dylan, Donovan, Peter, Paul and Mary, Joan Byers, Julie Felix, and uh, the spinners were on the telly, and later than that, some of Jeff's, Jeff Blythin's favourites. There was the boil washed, neatly pressed with sharp creases version of folk music called the Horton Weavers. But, uh, Jeff loves the, them, I know. But I remember going to see a bloke from Barnsley, a big bloke, a uh, big Yorkshire fella, and he had this huge soft voice and he was a great guitar player. There was another of my old-time heroes called Dave Burland. And he's, Dave's been to the club at Real a few times, but not in recent years, so we haven't got anything recorded from him. So this is one of my favourite Dave Burland songs. So we can't have him sing it, so I'm... <sighs> sorry, but I'm afraid we're stuck with Keith Price. And he's playing the bloody melodeon as well, but hey-ho. Anyway, this is... Here's the tender coming. Here's the tender coming, pressing all the men. Oh dear, Jimmy, what shall we do then? Here's the tender coming, not with shields bar. Here's the tender coming, full of men of war. Has the tender come in, stealing of me, dear? Oh, dear, Henny, take you away from here. They will ship you far, and that is what it means. Has the tender come in, full of red marine? Self away, 
hide thee till the frigate makes for Drewridge Bay. Here's the tender coming off the shields bar. Here's the tender coming full of men of war. And if they take your hinny, who's towing our bread? Me and little Jackie better off be dead. Here's the tender coming off the shields bar. Here's the tender coming full of men of war. And here's the tender coming, pressing all the men. Oh dear, Henny, what shall we do then? Here's the tender coming off the shields bar. Here's the tender coming full of men of war. No, I couldn't be nice about Keith. Uh, I often phone him up on a Saturday morning or he phones me up just to say what a load of tosh the blog was. But uh, he does seem to read it every week. He must be short of something to do. Poor fella. So anyway, yes, you followed the Liverpool-Leeds Canal as far as Leeds, followed it back along the towpath, presumably in your clogs. It's all about Lancashire. But you seem to have a very strong Scottish connection. You're always singing Scottish songs. Why? <laughs> uh, not where you'd probably immediately think. My interest with Scottish music started when I finished, probably about when I finished from Leeds in 73. And I got into the Corries. And the Corries were a duo, a couple of blokes. Uh, they used to have these black leather waistcoats and they made a lot of their own instruments and uh, really good. There was Ronnie Brown who had this lovely big soft voice and Roy Williamson who found fame. Uh, he was the chap who wrote Flower of Scotland, which is really the Scottish national anthem now. But their material was mainly traditional and I very quickly realized that the Scots have all the best tunes. No question. But uh, for my next, uh, next recording, I've picked a Burns song. Uh, I love singing this. It's A Fond Kiss. And Leslie wants this song done at her funeral. Uh, it's a bit selfish, but uh, I hope I'm not about <laughs> that time. I hope I'm long gone. But, uh, here's A Fond Kiss. Fond kiss and then you seven. A farewell that lasts forever. Deep in heart run tears and pledge Warring sighs and groans I'll wage thee. Who can say that fortune? Him. While the star of hope she leaves him, mean a cheerful twinkle lights me. Dark despair around unites me. Not blame my partial fancy, 
Nothing could resist my Nancy For to see her was a boon Love but her and love Had we never loved so kindly, had we never loved so blindly, never met and never parted, we would never have been broken hearted. Fare thee weel, thou first and best. Fare thee weel, thou best and dearest. Thine be ilk a joy and treasure. Peace, enjoyment, love, and So fond kiss and bed. If I will the last forever, deep in heart run tears, I'll pledge thee. Warring sighs and groans, I'll wage thee. So yeah, the Corries. I always thought it was the Twa Corries, but then I've realised that's a poem, isn't it? The Twa Corbies. Corbies. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so you didn't actually live north of the border. Oh yes, yes. Uh, for a while, I worked up in Caithness, which is the top right-hand corner round John the Groats, and I love the place uh, despite the weather. I still got good friends up there, but I hated the job. Uh, I was school dentist. And I went around the schools, many of them tiny little things, some of them even only had about a dozen pupils, had this fully kitted out caravan. But it was dead cushy, because I worked teacher's hours. You start at half nine, you knock off at half twelve, you start again at half one, and you're home at three o'clock. And you get all the school holidays. It was just so cushy, but I was bored shitless. I was bored out my brains and just treating kids all day. So I wanted to get back to general practice. So I moved back to Lancashire uh, for about 18 months before I then moved on to open my own practice in Landed now. Uh, but I went to Lancaster, which is a bit more affluent than. Accrington or Preston where I'd been before but like the whole of the north of England it had been neglected by every government of every persuasion so for my uh, next trek I've picked Soul Down the River which is a Pete Coe song but Jeff and Alan do it a lot better and the sentiments of the song don't just apply to Liverpool they apply pretty much to anywhere north of Watford, to be honest. So, uh, sold down the river. Cargoes and clippers 
mentioned having good friends up in Scotland. So speaking of your good friends, you've uh, recently for our live sessions managed to persuade one of them to come and join us on a regular basis. How did you end up knowing Nick Jackson? I mean, it, how did he lower himself to that level? It's Nicholas Lawrence Jackson. MBE. Uh, <laughs> don't say that. Don't like it. Nick's been one of my best mates for over 30 years now. And uh, from being about 13 till probably when we moved up here to Llanerith, my all-consuming passion was herpetology, which, as Adrian West will tell you, is the 
study of reptiles and amphibians. And over the years, I've kept loads and loads of stuff, mainly lizards, a few snakes, a few tree frogs. And people dislike these animals through sheer ignorance, to be honest. But they're the most beautiful, fascinating creatures. And also over the years, I've met some seriously wacky people. Uh, not just Nick Jackson. Uh, I think when I was about 15, these, those days, there was no internet. You bought stuff, you saw stuff for sale on Exchange and Mart. So I'd found this bloke in Salford who uh, sold a few reptiles and had a list of him and he wrote and gave me instructions how to get to his place. So I got the X43 bus at the top of Manchester Road, got off at Strange Ways, got another bus and asked the conductor to take me to wherever and tell me when to get off. So there were all these lovely Lancashire ladies on, a bit nosy. And they said, well, where are you going, love? Hafton Road. I said, 42 Hafton Road. Well, what are you going there for, love? Well, there's a pet shop. And they all looked at each other and said, no, love, there's no pet shop on Hafton Road. I thought, oh. So I thought, well, I'm here. I might as well go there. So I went. It was, it was pure Coronation Street. It was an end terrace. And I knocked on the door and nobody came, so I banged on the door and nobody came, so I hammered on the door and eventually the door opened. And this, this bloke opens the door, it looked like death. It was about five foot six tall and about five foot six wide and it was built like the absolute brick shit house as well. And he knew, he knew who I was because he'd written to me and he said, oh, you should have told me you're coming because normally I'm a joiner, I'd be out at work, I've got flu, so that's the only reason I'm in. And it wasn't just a joiner. You've got to think this was sort of mid-60s, when all-in wrestling was really big. And it was a part-time all-in wrestler. A uh, bloke called Graham Tyro, he was called, but he, he used to wrestle under the name of Bobby Graham. And he went up to... Uh, up <laughs> he took me upstairs... <laughs> You wouldn't do it now, would you? And they had this room, beautifully kitted. It was, it was a joiner, beautifully kitted out with all these vivaria. And this was 60s before the Dangerous Wild Animal Act ever came in. And the stuff they had in tanks there, you've got rattlesnakes, puff adders, gaboon vipers, and all sorts of stuff. And they got out this big bosk monitor lizard, a huge, powerful thing. And he's showing me this thing, and he said, oh, you've got to be careful with these, because if they bite you, they don't let go. So, instantly, there's blood everywhere, isn't there, because it's got hold of him. And he said, I'll hold the body, you prize its jaws off my hand. No chance, absolutely none. Anyway, it did let go of him, and it, this thing uh, scooted off, and actually ran up the chimney. Apparently got it back about three days later in the night when it got cold and just fell down. But uh, yeah, and anyway, moving on. Uh, for a while I was chairman of the Cheshire Herpetological Society. And I used to give talks through North Wales and Cheshire. And uh, <laughs> even now, five years ago, I was still the wedding. We were in Indonesia, so we went to see the big, big tick off my bucket list, went to see the Komodo Dragons. It's not an easy place to get to. We got a plane from Java to Flores, then we had to charter a boat and crew and sail out to Komodo. And these things were absolutely stupendous. They were 10 feet long and, oh, scary. But uh, anyway, I got to know Nick Jackson through the reptile thing and the zoo, really. Um, and it was only a few years, not even a few years, when I came across him, I think it was the White Lion in Flanellian. And I never knew he was a musician at all till then, he'd never said. And he used to play in a three-piece outfit called Fox Firkin, who were 
neck and neck with bees knees really for the sort of foremost folk group in North Wales. But Nick writes incredible songs, mainly funnies, and if he's sober, he's not bad at performing them, but you've got to catch him sober. He's also the nicest bloke you'll ever meet, but don't tell him that, and he won't, he won't listen to this twaddle. He'll have more sense than that. Anyway, we don't have a, a big selection of Nick's recordings, unfortunately. So I think we've got him doing The Highwayman, which he managed to get through once, I believe, without actually forgetting the words and cocking it up. So here's Nick singing The Highwayman. This is another poem, actually. It's an Al Alfred Noyes poem, made into a song by Phil Oaks, called The Highwayman. If you Google it and find the original poem, Phil Oaks reduced it by about a half. And it is certainly a case of less is more. When the wind was a torrent of darkness Among the gusty trees The moon was a ghostly galleon Tossed upon cloudy seas The road was a ribbon of moonlight Over the purple moon A highwayman came riding, riding, riding A highwayman came riding Up to the old inn over the cobbles he clattered, clashed in the dark yard, tapped with his whip on the shutters, but all was locked and barred. So he whistled a tune to the window, and who should be waiting there but Bess, the landlord's daughter, the landlord's black eyed daughter, plaiting a dark red love knot into her long black hair. One kiss, my bonny sweetheart, I'm after a prize tonight. And I'll be back with the yellow gold before the morning light. But if they press me hotly and harry me through the day, then look for me by moonlight, watch for me by moonlight. I'll come to thee by moonlight, though hell should bar the way. He did not come at dawning, he did not come at noon, and out of a tawny sunset before the rise of the moon, when the road was a gypsy's ribbon, looping the purple moor, a troop of men came marching, King George's men came marching, a red coat troop came marching up to the old inn door. They took the landlord's daughter with many a sniggering jest. They bound a musket beside her with the barrel beneath her breast. Now keep good watch, and they kissed her. She heard the dead man say, Look for me by moonlight, watch for me by moonlight. I'll come to thee by moonlight, though hell should bar the way me by moonlight, hoofbeats ringing clear, watch for me by moonlight, were they deaf that they could not hear, look for me by moonlight, she drew one final breath, then her finger moved in the moonlight, the musket shattered the moonlight, it shattered her breast in the moonlight, and warned him with her death. Off he spurred into the west, he did not know she stood. Bound with her black hair flowing down, drenched in her own red blood. No, not till the dawn did he hear it, and his face grew grey to hear. How best the landlord's daughter, the landlord's black-eyed daughter, watched for her love in the moonlight, and died in the darkness there. Back he spurred like a madman, shouting a curse to the sky. With the white road smoking behind him, his rapier brandished high. Blood red were his spurs in the golden sun, wine red was his velvet coat. As they shot him down on the highway, down like a dog on the highway, 
He laid his blood on the highway With blood on the lace at his throat Still they say when the night is clear The wind is in the trees The moon is a ghostly galleon Tossed upon cloudy seas The road is a ribbon of moonlight Over the purple moor The highwayman comes riding, riding, riding Riding up to the old indoor. I've got a reptile, you know, John. <laughs> what have you got? A tortoise. Oh, how old is it? Um, well, my mother bought it from a pet shop for sixpence, Twigdens in Rill. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when we moved into this house, it was a present from my brother. And uh, that's 49 years ago, and he was pretty much the size he is now, then, so I don't know how quickly they grow up. He's a Herman's tortoise, apparently. Mm -hmm. yeah. But go um, Hermanii. Yeah, he, um, he, he has the run of the garden. When my father grew dahlias, he used to grow prized dahlias. <laughs> and we had wild rabbits running in the garden and the tortoise. And we fenced in the borders rather than the animals, because the animals need more space than the flowers do. But we had to bury chicken wire two feet deep to keep the rabbits from burrowing under it. <laughs> but yeah, Torty, uh, he has the run of the garden these days and has spent the last 40 odd years desperately trying to catch a seagull. Every time one lands in the garden, he goes for it. Very slowly, he sneaks <laughs> up on them. <laughs> He's never, ever quite got one, but he hasn't given up. and His tenacity is phenomenal. We'll have to learn to lure them with a chip. Don't worry, John. I'm going to edit out the nice things that you said about uh, about Nick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Just in case. Yeah, he might watch it. You know, you never no, he's, it I again. don't think he's sure. He's not that short a time. He's still... Uh, <laughs> he's meant to be working two days a week now because he's long past 70. But I spoke to him last week and I think he'd been in just about every day. Uh, they're desperate for money at the zoo at the moment. So they could walk around sort of the perimeter a hundred times and see if he could raise a few million quid, but I think he'd be unlucky. Yeah, that only works once. The novelty's mm. worn off. Yeah. So <laughs> let's talk about your spouse. You know, the sainted woman who's put up with you since, <laughs> what, 1989, was it, or 1981? No, 1989. Um, yeah, that was one of the few good decisions I've ever made in my life. Because uh, she's a grafter, fair dues. She puts, a, we've got a lot of land to look after up here and she does a fair bit uh, and she will hold a fence post while I smash it with a 10 pound sledgehammer and knock it in. You've got to either be pretty stupid or pretty confident in me to do that. But, um, yeah, when we, just after we got married, she'd got a couple of chums, one was another radiographer, and we started going to a few festivals, uh, especially Fylde, we went to Fylde every year, and in those days it was the C word, camping. But the standout festival turn for me was always Jeslo and the Bad Pennies. We've had Jeslo a few times, but I don't think we've ever been able to afford him with his uh, one of his bands. But Jeslo always had these catchy chorus songs that anyone and everyone can join in with, even a grunter like me. So at this point, I don't think I was gaining in confidence when I started joining. I think I was usually just the worst for the drink. So I've picked a Jez Lowe song now, which I think Andrew Pritchard requested last time he was here, called The High Part of the Town, which is a nice cheery little song with a nice cheery little chorus. Keep your hands down in your pockets and your eyes down on the ground, for the streets are lined with silver in the high part of the town. This is a song, I wrote this one in 1981. I remember rushing in from school that day. And, uh... <laughs> oh, I 
actually playing on the wrong instrument. Well, I shall persevere. Every Sunday we go walking to the high part of the town. Ever since my father went up there and he found half a crown. He said this is easy money, the conditions can't be beat. We've never found a penny more, but it keeps us off the street. Keep your hands down in your pocket and your eyes down on the ground. For the streets are lime silver in the high part of the town. Our house is not so crowded since me mum she ran away She'd rather live from hand to mouth than live from day to day Well me father's often lonely but it's a blessing in disguise It's cured me mother's headaches and it's cured me dad's black eyes Keep your hands down in your pocket and your eyes down on the ground For the streets I'm a silver in the high part of the town Then a man came from the council for to make me go to school. He asked me lots of questions and he told me lots of rules. Then they tried to teach geography, but I found it much too hard. When they asked me where does coal come from, I answered next door's yard. Keep your hands down in your pocket and your eyes down on the ground. For the streets are I'm a silver in the high part of the town. Then last Sunday night, me father, he had a bit too much to sup. He swapped his Sunday overcoat for a seven-week-old pup. Well, they told him it was a bulldog. He believed him, I suppose. But we found out it's a poodle with a badly broken nose. And keep your hands down in your park and your eyes down on the ground. For the streets and I'm a silver in the high part of the town. Well, they sent me home from school last week because they said that I had nits. My mother said she was ashamed, but I was thrilled a bit. All my friends were green with envy, so I knew just what to do. I sold them nits at ten pence each and they all got sent home to Keep your hands down in your pocket and your eyes down on the ground. For the streets I'm a silver and the high pie once more. Yes, keep your hands down in your pocket. And your eyes down on the ground For the streets I'm a silver And I part of the town Thank you very much We have actually had Jez Lowe and the Bad Pennies There was a gig organised Was it up in St Asaph or somewhere? Ooh. On the roundabout there, that hotel place and it was it was co-organised by several clubs. It's in the archive. Oh right, oh. I think I, I probably went to that, but I was probably well. It was an all-day drinking job that day. <laughs> um. Yeah, so you probably missed him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was um, the high part of the town. I don't know whether Andrew requested it, but it was his encore piece. So you only just got your request. Ooh, ooh, if he hadn't done an encore, we wouldn't have it. I think Andrew, he didn't know what it was called. He said, the one with the dog with the broken nose in it. <laughs> That's as much as he knew. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree with you. Jeslo is quite a talent. Yeah. So how did you end up in a dive like the bee? And uh. it was a dive. I think there's probably a lot of people wonder that, uh, why they ended up in a dive like the bee with no light bulbs in the toilets, certainly no toilet roll, um, no beer, what a dive it was, but oh, it was such good fun. But Leslie was a radiographer at Glen Cluid, so she obviously knew Daryl, although I think everybody in Will knew Daryl. And we started going on the beer to the beer on a Friday, and once we'd started, we never really stopped, I don't think. And I soon decided that I'd like to be a bit more than a punter in the audience, but I was being held back 
by a complete lack of any musical talent whatsoever. So I started off reading Les Barker monologues and poems and eventually I plucked up the bottle to sing Jehovah's Witness at the door very badly and I probably at this point I thought yeah Miss Chester was right might have knocked her but she had a point. Anyway for the next piece uh, I've picked a more recent Les Barker one Will the Turtle Be Unbroken, or Myrtle the Turtle, whatever you want to call it. This has a great chorus, everybody can join in it, and it's just good fun. Will the Turtle Be Unbroken? In a lonely part of town There are twenty-seven stories It's a long way to the ground There I live with my friend Myrtle My companion, my best friend She ain't human, she's a turtle And I love her till the end she was standing by my window on a cold and cloudy day when some wild and willful wind blew my poor myrtle clean away and will the turtle be unbroken Myrtle as she hurtles through the sky, Lord, through the sky. I ran downstairs, I was crying. I must find her, I must know. My poor Myrtle will be lying several hundred feet below. And will the turtle? As she hurtles through the sky, Lord, through the sky. Was she sundered into sections when a shell fell to the ground? Would I find two hundred plectrums, my poor myrtle, all around? And will the turtle? Caretaker, oh caretaker, why do you lie stony dead? You were minding your own business, something landed on your head, but the turtle was unbroken. By and by, Lord, by and by, Lord, help Myrtle. As she hurtled through the sky, Lord, through the sky. Undertaker, undertaker, lay that poor man in his grave. God has taken the old caretaker, but my myrtle, she was saved. Yes, the turtle was unbroken. Sky, Lord, through the sky, through the sky, Lord, through the sky. It's 
so um, yeah, well, that's how you got to the club. I disagree with the whole lack of talent thing because what you do on a Friday night doesn't come from nowhere. Uh, I don't know where it does come from. I can't well, say. Yeah. So, since those heady days with Daryl and no beer and the uh, beer accompaniment of the beer pump, I remember. <laughs> And the pool balls click clacking through the little <laughs> window from the front from the front saloon. How's the club changed apart from relocating? Uh, it's changed a lot, uh, which it should do. Things need to change. There's a lot, lot less uh, traditional music now, and probably a lot more variety. Uh, for myself, encouraged by Daryl and Ted, uh, I did persist. Um, guitar playing got a bit better and eventually the singing, but when you're on the same bill as people like Mike Hawkins and Alan, never be in that league. <laughs> Very few people are, but that doesn't bother me. Um, I don't think a lot of our punters realise just how good our floor spots are. If they went to a few other clubs, they'd think, Christ, they're awful. And if there's something that somebody you don't like, they'll be off in 10 minutes and there'll be somebody there you do like. But whatever you taste in music, there's always the crack. And I think that's what a lot of our crowd go for. It can be the banter from the audience, it can be Jeff's stupid stories. Or in the last few years, it can be Mel's songs. Uh, made a, it's been Mel has been a huge addition to the club. We all like a laugh, and there's a lot of, I suppose, what you could call adult humour. So I'd like to have a listen to Mel and his girlfriend, Shirley, if you can arrange that. I can. <laughs> Every time I look at Shirley, I seem to lose my senses. I get a violent nosebleed. She mists up me contact lenses. Every time I look at Shirley, I know that there's no other. And I don't mind that Shirley's made of rubber. I don't know what it is about me that seems to attract her. She used to be an inner tube. On someone's knackered tractor The farmer climbed on board Every morning bright and early And in a funny way I suppose I do the same to Shirley When I'm with Shirley I go to bed early She's the sweetest lady in the land Now please don't laugh When I show you Shirley's photograph Cause Shirley is my girly I hope you'll understand Now someone took her from the farm and ironed out the creases Painted on her face and added various bits and pieces Her mouth is always open, her eyes are always staring Her legs go up and down more if you put less air in um, I'm not saying who, but there was a gentleman at the back of the room when I sang that line, he was nodding. <laughs> She's got rubber hips and rubber lips and even a rubber belly. She isn't Leo, Taurus, Pisces, Shirley is Pirelli. She doesn't shout or move about, she never wants to go out. Christ, you have to hold on tight when she has a blowout. When I'm with Shirley, I go to bed early. She's the sweetest lady in the land. Now please don't laugh when I show you Shirley's photograph. Because Shirley is my girly. I hope you'll understand. Now the other day, I took her from the cupboard where I hide her. Decided I would take her out and blow her up and ride her But we were not alone As we made love al fresco And we were both arrested 
in the car park outside Tesco when I'm with Shirley. I go to bed early. She's the sweetest lady in the land. Now please don't laugh when I show you Shirley's photograph, cause Shirley is my girly. I hope you'll understand. So we know you've given the, the club a great deal. Yeah, we've got some fairly decent music, really, really good bread, and an average blog. At least somebody's doing it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Obson's choice that we're stuck with you most of the time. Yeah, but what have you got out of it? Because you put a lot in. Uh, confidence. Uh, everybody who has ever got up on a stage has some sort of ego problem. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think that pretty much goes without saying. Uh, somewhere or other, you've got a bit of a, f a fault somewhere inside there to want to do that, to put yourself through that and risk ridicule and failure and all the rest of it. Uh, but yeah, it's great now to have the confidence to get up there on a Friday and not be absolutely terrified. Um, I still do get nervous and I remember when we were all down in London for the Westminster gig. It's a pity my parents and Miss Bloody Chester weren't still around to, uh, to sort of see that because uh, that was one of the proudest days of my life I think going down there. But going back to the club there's nothing gives you more of a lift than to stand there singing and the audience belt the chorus back to you and they give you harmonies and a lot. It's just such a great feeling. So for my last song I've picked one which I always sing for me, my dad and my dad knew that the only way off that council estate was through education and this is an Alan Taylor song and I'd just like to say thanks to everybody in the crowd who every time really joins in this big time and gives it everything and thank you for putting up with me for all those years. So Alan Taylor song, roll on the day. As the dawn comes creeping, roll on the day. Another night not sleeping, roll on the day. Roll on the morning, roll on the day. I hear the old man softly pray. As the dawn comes creeping, 
Did when Alan Taylor sang it as well, didn't we? <laughs> I think I was probably quite surprised at how well people <laughs> did it. And of course, there's another thing to tick off your bucket list. Last year, you got to open for Alan Taylor. <laughs> or was it earlier this year? It was last year. Wasn't uh, it? Last October, yeah. Yeah. I think I think we've all just put this year behind us. Uh, <laughs> it's like a, it's a non-event. <laughs> it's going to be referred to in the future as 2020 hindsight. Because <laughs> we've learned about all the mistakes that have been made. <laughs> well, thank you, John. It's been a pleasure to learn a little bit more about you. I can't believe that I've known you for seven years. That's how long I've been coming. And didn't know all this. <laughs> <laughs> Which shows that uh, I haven't been paying attention or you're very private. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, um, that's why I like the the weekends away and the social nights like the um, you know, the treasure hunt and the quiz and stuff like that because you get to see people outside of the club in the club you get a bit of a chat before you start and not much at the end because I'm always putting stuff away a uh, couple of minutes at half time but through the e evening Everybody is pretty damn good at keeping quiet. You get the old can of lager going, Psh! but uh, everyone's pretty good at keeping quiet and respecting the turn because we're, we're not professionals. We don't do it for money, even though some could, as you say. But um, yeah, so it's uh, it's. Not, I, I like the social events, so you can meet people. And um, I've. Over the years, I've persuaded a few people to come up here, and sort of, we're so far out. If you come up, you tend to stop the night. And I love cooking. I haven't mentioned co love cooking, love food, as does Leslie. Love drink, and we just like catering for people and uh, entertaining people. But on a Sunday morning, the pleasure you can have from listening to Alan singing in the hall because our hall has fantastic acoustics and it, the sound goes sort of vertically up the hall and then spreads out it's a funny funny sort of house up here or Andy Anderson playing his harp on a Sunday morning or playing his bagpipes at eight o'clock outside uh, these are things that money can't buy yeah well, you see, that's the Scottish connection again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they've got all the best tunes, but they've got the bagpipes. That sort of balances it out. <laughs> John, we've pretty much run out of time. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all this with me. Well, with all of us. Yeah. And good night. Good night and thank you. <laughs>